DB here with the Tour Junkies. Five sleepers for the Masters 2022. I'm going to break out my old caddy gear for this one. Here we go, baby. The old caddy hat from 2007, 2008. She still, she still fits. I'm breaking out the old yardage book from Augusta National. Let's see my days as a caddy. Look at this, number 12. Played number 12 twice that day on caddy day. Uh, made birdie on number 12 there. First time, you know, got the old scorecards from back in the day. Yeah, man, I'm pumped. Let's get into it. I'm going to give you five sleepers for the 2022 Masters. I think all these guys have top 20 upside at the worst, and I think they're going to be really nice sleepers for DFS. Let's get to it. Get in the comments and tell me who is your sleeper for the Masters this year, if it's somebody different. And when you see the picks, I want to know who your most hated sleeper is. Out of my five, who do you hate the most? All right, this guy, I think I, he truly has top 15 upside, and I kind of hate on him a lot because – He's, he's, he doesn't always live up to the hype in the Twitter, you know, in the Twitter machine and the DFS betting streets, but he has done okay at Augusta in his first two attempts. And it's South African Christian Bezadenhout, or Cbez, as we like to effectively call him. He's making his third master start, where in his first start, he finished tied for 38th in the November 2020 event. And in 2021, finished T40. Um, but South Africans have tended to do well at Augusta National before, but He's made seven of seven cuts in his last majors, and I'm including the Players' Championship, so I'm going to say this for all these players, but looking over some, some performance at majors and the players, and I know the players likes to call itself a fifth major. It's not. I'm not saying that it is, but it is a tough event, very tough golf course, world-class field, so I think it counts. Um, but seven of his last seven with four top 40s in those majors. So to me, that, that just screams like, you know, he's a made cut. So if he's cheap in DFS, if he's in the 6Ks, if he's in the low 7s, you know, it screams a made cut. He could be that last piece in one of your lineups. But I do think Cbez, in his third attempt, could get around and, and finish with maybe top 15 upside. He's good just everywhere. Strokes gained everywhere. He's not one of these players that has one real, really great strength or maybe two and then a really glaring weakness. He doesn't hit it very far. That's probably the weakest part of his game. He could hear it land in the fairway. But he's very accurate, solid iron player, solid short game, uh, great around the green, and a you know good putter. He's got one missed cut in 2022 with four top 25 so far in just eight events. And that's actually with a fairly cold putter for old Cbez. So I think the upside there for Cbez, top 15, like I said, and potentially a good top 20 bet, or you know depending on who his head-to-head -head matchup is, you could take him there. All right, let's get to the second sleeper, and I love this guy. I think he may have one of the higher upsides of the five that I'm giving you here, and it's a Georgia Bulldog, and his name is Brian Harmon. Now, what Brian Harmon lacks in, uh, you know, in in pants inseam length because he's like four foot ten, he makes up for with an incredible short game, and he doesn't get himself in a lot of trouble. This will be his fourth Masters, missed the cut in his first attempt, 44th in 2018, and then last year got in and finished 12th. I like to see the trend going well for Brian Harmon and playing well. Since 2020, he has made seven of eight cuts in majors and, and the Players' Championships with four top 20s. Seven of eight made cuts, four top 20s in those fields. And listen, Brian Harmon is known as a very short hitter. I'm dogging on him right now for being that. But he's showing you that, like, a short hitter can play in these majors. To make seven of his last eight cuts at U.S. Opens, PGA Championships, like long venues that he's overcome with really good precision and short game, he's a bulldog, okay? And he's playing really good right now. In 2022, he's got uh, he's got top fives at the American Express and the Valspar. He's playing in the match play right now. I don't know how he's doing, but Brian Harmon is an interesting name. He hits a ton of fairways, good short game, and a very, very solid putter. Um, and, and really, I think he can do it in any conditions. You know, if Augusta is uh, soft and, and playing a little bit easier, he's fine. He's proven that he can do that. If it gets difficult, you know, every now and then the wind will blow here or just, you know, a big yellow cloud of, of pollen will come and wipe people's allergies out and people got watery eyes and their nose is dripping, you know, in the middle of their downswing and they can't play. Like Harmon's proven he can play in difficult conditions and he doesn't make a lot of big numbers. And I like that. And his iron play recently is trending very nicely, and I like that for Brian Harmon. So there you go. That's my second sleeper. And I think Harmon's upside is truly a top five. I think he could top five. We just saw him t you know, finish 12th in 2021. So obviously we know the upside at least goes to there. But given how much better he's continuing to play now, 
I think he's got top five upside. I don't know that I put an outright win bet on him, but in DFS, I could see him being in the low sevens, maybe even 6K range, depending on how things shake out. You've obviously got all the old farts and all the amateurs down there that weigh down the bottom of the 6K, but I think he's going to be a good value and a sneaky play. All right. For my third sleeper, I'm sure I'm going to get a little bit of comment hate in here on this one, you know, but but I want you to hear me out. Now, speaking of comments, please hit the thumbs up, the like button, subscribe here on YouTube. Uh, be notified every time the Tour Junkies go live. We go live all the time. We've got all kind of content going live on, on this channel, and it would help us out. And a comment, tell me who your sleeper is for the 2022 Masters as of now and who who you hate the most of the sleepers that I'm giving you. Uh, I think I think that'd be fun. So I want to I want to hear the hate. Give me the hate. Tell me why you think I'm wrong. Do that in the comments. You let, people love doing that. All right, my next hate, my next, uh, I say hater, my next sleeper pick is probably one that a lot of people are going to get on me about in the comments because you're going to go, DB, you're such a Luke Liss lover, but God, you're right. I just can't quit the guy. He's a friend of the podcast. He's a member at my home club at Champions Retreat. He lives in Augusta with his family. His wife's from Augusta. Great people, great family. Um, this is, this is what's interesting. Luke is finally coming back to Augusta for the first time since 2005. You heard that right. 2005, he finishes the low amateur at Augusta, finishing tied for 33rd. And now he's back for the first time. He's never gotten qualified to get back. It's crazy that he's, that it's taken him this long to get back here, but he does live here in Augusta. I mentioned that, that he will have had plenty of opportunities to play Augusta, uh, with members, with other connections that he has. I, I promise you that. And, you know, we talk about being at home, right, during, a, during an event. And I think there are players who that certainly sometimes can be a distraction, tickets and blah, 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 uh, family in town, the pressure maybe. I, I don't know if that's going to be the case for Luke. Knowing his family, knowing the way he prepares, um, I, I just don't think it is. I think I think given the, the opportunity that's before him, this is not an event he gets in every year. I just said it. He hadn't been back since 2005. I think him and his family are going to do everything possible to make sure Luke has as normal a week as possible. The pressures are, are off, right? This is not The Masters is not an event where players get a bunch of requests for tickets because even the players don't get enough tickets, right? And it, they're brutally hard to get. So, I mean, players have no problem going, hey, I can't get you a ticket, so leave me alone. But I just think Luke is going to be comfortable I think he feels like he's earned the spot, and uh, and he's there. Now, listen, he's a terrible putter, okay? God-awful putter, right? Let's go ahead and get that out of the way. I'm going to address that again in a second. But T to Green, he's one of the top players on the PGA Tour right now. Just absolute stud T to Green. And I think what we've seen is g great putters. Phil Mickelson, Tiger Woods, Jordan Spieth definitely have succeeded at Augusta. But really crappy putters have, too. Sergio Garcia, last year's champion, Hideki Matsuyama. Remember who finished second to Hideki? Will Zalatoris. Have you seen him lately? He's stressing over a putt the length of his shoe size. Like, it's it's awful. So, Corey Connors has a good record here as well in, a, in just a few attempts. Siwoo Kim has a good record here. All these guys are terrible, terrible putters. Paul Casey, not known to be a great putter in his career. But Sergio and Hideki are the ones I point to the most because two incredible ball strikers, Tita Green, that all it took was one one year at the Masters having one week where some putts drop or you're just neutral to the field and you're not losing four strokes putting over four rounds, and then they're there. And Luke's ball striking has that kind of upside. Now, do I, do I truly think Luke is going to win? Am I going to bet him outright? No, I don't think I will. I do think he has top 10 upside, for sure top 20. I think in DFS, people are going to avoid him because – you know, for, he hadn't been here since 2005, the course history angle. Um, and, you know, they're going to say, I want somebody that can make a putt at Augusta. And, you know, in some ways, that's uh, that makes sense. But he's having a great year. He won the Farmers at, at Torrey Pines. Um, he doesn't have a real extensive major championship record. Hadn't had a lot of opportunities, though. But he does, it, according to Fantasy National, his strokes gained on difficult courses is very good. And I just think, like I said, the ball striking is what I like to bet on here. Uh, and I think Luke, Luke List delivers just that. All right, I got two more sleepers for you. And one of them, you're, you, I promise you, you're not going to see coming. You, you're going to be like, oh, Luke, uh, D DB, we saw the Luke List play coming a mile away. Okay, you're not going to see the, the last one coming. I can assure you of that. All right, let me get to my last two sleepers. My fourth sleeper here 
is Mr. Jason Kokrak. You thought you might have thought I was going to say J- Day, but I'm not. Jason Kokrak, I believe, has winning upside at Augusta National. Yes, winning upside. This is his third appearance. Okay, miscut in his first one, 49th uh, last year in 2021. What, whatever. Since his first Masters, where he missed the cut. Uh, a couple things have happened. Number one, he's won twice more on the PGA Tour. The second thing that's happened that not a lot of people are going to be aware of is he changed his caddy. His new caddy is a guy named David Robinson, D-Rob, as we like to call him. D-Rob is a local to this area kind of guy. I think he's more Aiken, South Carolina. D-Rob played in my member guest at Champions Retreat. He was a guest, and he was also the best player in the whole thing, and we have a lot of stud players. I'm not one of them. D-Rob is probably the best putter that doesn't play professional golf in the world. He's known among the caddy community on the PJ Tour, great greens reader, great putter himself, great short game, great player. And I think he's actually helped Kokrak a ton on the greens, around the greens, reading putts, all that kind of stuff. I I think it's helped. And D-Rob has plenty of experience around Augusta. If you look at Kokrak's performance in big events, in He's made six of nine cuts in majors and the players included since 2020 with a T9 and a, uh, in 2021 at the players and a T26 at the 21 Open Championship. Solid performances there. Uh, he's a bomber, right? He's a bomber. He hits it a long way, which bombers typically do very well at Augusta. He's a solid iron player and a really deadly putter when he's on. He seems to have these very hot, cold weeks with the putter lacks a little consistency that I'd like to see, but when he pops, he can pop off for five or six strokes gain in a single event, okay? His best putting surface, bent grass, which is what you have here at Augusta National. I think I think Kokrak is going to be probably in that mid-7K, the high, maybe high 7K range on DFS, uh, but definitely for a top 20 bet, definitely, you know, depending on his head-to-head matchup, I'd look at him there. But I do believe Jason Kokrak could win the 2022 Masters. As crazy as it sounds, I think he could. All right, it's time for the final sleeper, and this is this is a reach. I got I got to be honest with you. This is a reach. I think the upside for this player is a top 20. I think that is peak upside for this guy. But you're gonna get him super cheap. He's gonna be. I guarantee you, he'll be in the 6K range. I'll be shocked if he's not. Unless he he's not even playing in the match play. So if he plays Valspar or Valero and he wins, maybe he won't be. But um, yeah. He's going to be cheap, okay? Top 20 bet for sure. Um, Maybe if you're in some sort of pool where you have to pick players in a certain column, he may be a guy in a column that could give you some leverage on the field. He's going to be super cheap in DFS. Um, And he's making his 20th Masters appearance. 20th. And it's not Bernhard Longer. It is Stuart Sink, the Atlanta boy, the Georgia Tech guy. Got my son on the bag. Life is good. I'm living the dream making my 20th start at the Masters. Stuart Sink has had a resurgent career. Some of it is due to a key factor that I think will help him here at Augusta, and that is adding a lot of pop in the bat, hitting it much farther than he used to. Swing speed is up. Uh, His average swing speed on tour right now uh, in in 2022 is like almost 117 miles an hour, 176, 77 mile an hour ball speed on measured shot. That's that's moving it. I mean, that's like Victor Hovland territory. Uh, Stuart Sink is bombing the golf ball. Since he's changed his swing and or added swing speed, he's won twice. He won the 2020 Fortinet and he won the 2021 Heritage. He also finished 30th at the PGA Championship at Kiowa, where Phil won. Long course, brutal course, difficult course, strong field, 30th place finish. Listen to this. Um, he's, and he's all and he's always been a solid putter, always been a very good putter. T7 at the Valspar, because he was he wasn't really playing great in 2022. Then all of a sudden, T7 at the Valspar where he gained five strokes on approach, and that's the key. The approach play and the the around-the-green play is very key for Stuart Sink, Uh, but I liked seeing the five strokes gained at Valspar. It could be an anomaly, could be a weird week, but he could have kind of you know, found a little something, and now here he is. He does putt well on bent, and he plays difficult courses quite well. Like I said, he's a Georgia Tech guy, so he's got plenty of Augusta National connections. I mean, when I was there, all your Georgia Tech members would always be hosting – Georgia Tech graduates and and tour players and Georgia players would be doing the same thing and South Carolina players would be doing the same thing. Stewart Sink has had plenty of experience around Augusta National. Um, and, and we know that Augusta is a place where the old guys, the geezers, can pop. 
Sergio, I mean, how many attempts did it take him before he finally hit it? Justin Rose is continuing to do well. When when he may suck somewhere else, or, or most of the year, he comes here and he does well. The the edge and the course history and the course knowledge that a guy like Stuart Sink has is worth something. And um, it, it, I thought this was interesting. Stuart Sink will be 48 years old this year, playing in his 20th Masters. Bernhard Langer is 64 years old, okay? Since he was 48, so since Bernhard Langer was 48, 16 years ago, this is what he's done. He has four top 30s and a top 10. And most recently, a T, his best finish, a T29 in 2020 as a 62-year-old, whatever that was, T29. So Bernhard Langer, when he was 48 and beyond, he did all that. I really believe Stuart Sink has that kind of firepower. I think he could top 20 here. I think he can give you a very cheap, if you want to go real studs and duds in DFS, a very cheap play at the bottom with some definite ownership leverage, um, but top 20 upside in DraftKings. So there you go. That's the five sleepers. Don't forget the comment. I want to know which one you hate the most and who's your sleeper. Let's do it. The Tour Junkies putting out a tons of tons of content for the Masters this week uh, and, or this year. Can't wait. I'm excited about it. It's the best week of the year. If you're in Augusta, hit us up. We're all over the place. Masters week. It's going to be so much fun. May your screens be green and bend over your bookie. See ya. 192 out.